guess starting out, I should talk with uh, the uh, more obscure release I saw, which, yeah, I know it's technically direct-to-DVD, but I, I did see it in a, th in a movie theater, so counting it as a theatrical release. Uh, yeah, and that's uh, Batman and Harley Quinn. Um, yeah, I figured since, you know, last year I saw the Batman the Killing Joke, I figured I'd uh, check out uh, Batman and Harley Quinn, especially since this one caught my eye pretty well. Um, uh, I, I didn't I didn't see uh, Batman Return to the Cape Crusaders, so um, I kind of missed out on that because of class. Um, uh, but this one... Uh, yeah, uh, this was kind of a weird one for me, um, yeah, uh, so what it is, is, uh, the, the film is about Poison Ivy and Floronic Man, uh, teaming up to, uh, turn the entire world into plant life, and, uh, Batman and Nightwing request the help of Harley Quinn to do so, and as you can tell from the trailers and from the look of the film, uh, it is in the style of Batman the Animated Series. Oh, sorry, I'm getting distracted. Um, yeah, uh, it was an interesting choice to, you know makes sort of a PG-13 version of uh, an episode of, uh, uh, of something that's related to Batman and the Animated Series since, uh, you know, we haven't really gotten that since, uh, uh, I guess technically Batman Mask of the Phantasm, although I think that might have been PG, I don't know, someone correct me on that. Um... <clears throat> Yeah, and, uh, although the one, and, uh, of course, a lot of things, uh, the, the number one thing people have been talking about is, uh, uh, Melissa Roush playing, uh, Harley Quinn, and how it's just her doing her impression of Sheldon's mom from Big Bang Theory. And, uh, you know, to be fair, I didn't mind it as much, I mean... It, it, it probably would have been just easier to get Tara Strong, who's currently doing the voice of Harley, to do it, but whatever. Um, yeah, that. I guess overall, this does kind of feel like uh, the the jointing bridge, uh, uh, sort of a jointing bridge between uh, uh, that one flashback scene and uh. Batman Return of the Joker, and, uh, where Batman Beyond starts, I guess, um, or, I don't know, something like that, um, because, uh, y you don't really see the Joker in this movie, so you assume that he's just dead, so there's that, um, but, uh, I guess, I guess overall I thought the film was, uh, kind of all right I, i've been rambling on for about four minutes about it and i haven't gotten uh to like what i thought about it i mean i thought it was all right um it, it definitely just feels like an extended episode of you know the show which you know it's not that bad but it's just doesn't really feel as satisfying especially with the ending like that the, there's like something big that happens and then no, nothing really comes from it. Yeah, I and mean, it just ends on a weird note. Um. Yeah, the, the, this was definitely a weird thing, a uh, weird film to sit through. Although there were some, I, I do think it is worth checking out because there is some pretty good humor in it. Um, they surprisingly made a fart joke funny. Yeah, a fart joke in a Batman film. It's the world we live in, apparently. Um, 
yeah, I mean, uh, it, it definitely is nice to see uh, Bruce Timm's uh, animation style on the big screen, but uh, again, much like with Killing Joke, I thought the animation with Mask of the Phantasm and Under the Red Hood are much better than than what I saw here, sadly. Um, I mean, it's good, but it's just not fantastic. Uh, yeah, overall, there's not there's not much else I can say about it. I mean, it's fine for what it is. Um, it is nice to see uh, Lauren Lester and uh, Kevin Conroy work together as uh, Nightwing and Batman again. That's always a treat. Um, trying to think if there's anything else... Uh, no, I think that's all I got, so... Yeah, Batman and Harley Quinn, I like it, it's fine.